Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Amna Hussain, board certified pediatrician, board certified lactation consultant, and mom. Today we're going to be talking about a topic I haven't really hit on in the past during any of my videos on this channel, and that's autism. So I'll be totally honest, when it comes to discussing autism and discussing autism in a very broad sense on a platform where I could be talking to a number of different viewers, those who might be concerned their child has autism, those who have no concerns or family history of autism, those who consider that they may have a child who has developed autism, it can be a little daunting, especially because this is a topic I really like to connect with my patients on one-on-one -on -one in the exam room and discuss what the risks are and then how we can further help their child and their family through this diagnosis. I do want to approach it today on this platform because a recent study came out proving that maternal use of acetaminophen or Tylenol is not linked to the baby developing autism. Now before we get further down into this study, I thought it would be really helpful to talk about what is autism. Now if you're not in the medical field or if you've not worked with children or if you are not familiar at all with what the definition of autism is, it can seem kind of vague and it can seem kind of daunting. So let's talk about it. Autism or autism spectrum disorder is a broad range of disorders that's characterized by difficulties with social skills, speech, and nonverbal communication, and repetitive behaviors. Now, according to the CDC, one in 36 children have autism, and one in 45 adults also have autism. Now, that's not a small number, so that must mean that there is a lot of variability. And that is exactly right. That's why it's called a spectrum of disorders, autism spectrum disorder. And our verbiage has really developed and continue to try to really become as precise and concise when it comes to diagnosing children and also allowing them to have the appropriate therapies that can help with the particular struggles that these children face when diagnosed with autism. Because here's the thing, we know that there can be many forms of autism. Some people can really do well and strive with certain aspects of their autism and others can really, really struggle. For example, some people with autism have no difficulty with speaking or communicating and others can be completely nonverbal. Some who carry the diagnosis of autism have no intellectual disabilities and others definitely can have that be a significant factor in their life. Some people with autism can struggle to do their daily activities of living and then be able to actually grow up and take care of themselves alone as adults. Others don't face that problem at all and can function very well independently even into adulthood. So let's talk about how the recent study has related to autism. Using acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol during pregnancy was not associated with an increased risk of autism, ADHD, or intellectual disability in children. And this study was actually published in JAMA and took place over the course of years from 1994 to 2019 in Sweden and included over 2 million children. And of the analysis, which included over 2.4 million children, they actually looked at siblings as well who were not exposed to the acetaminophen drug. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of stigma out there with what causes autism, what doesn't cause autism. I've done videos in the past, including epidurals, and some people think epidurals can be linked to autism. This, there's no data to prove this. And in fact, when it comes to a lot of these assumptions, there's actually data to disprove it. Before we further delve into that topic, let's talk about what are the known causes or risk factors per se of autism. So at this time, it's widely believed and understood that genetic influences environmental factors, and social determinants all play a role when it comes to autism. Now again, these are all risk factors and not necessarily pinpoint causes. That means to say that, for example, some of the genetic changes that have been linked to autism 
are present in other individuals who do not carry the same diagnosis of autism. So there's definitely other factors at play, environmental factors that we just recently mentioned and social determinants. It's definitely risk factors that we're noticing and not necessarily pinpoint causes, which can I understand be very frustrating for families. There have definitely been analyses of twin studies, which are really interesting that show that 60 to 90% of your risk for developing autism does come from your genome. That being said, it's often thought that if you have one child with autism, you're more likely to have another child with autism just because of the genetic background, the genetic influence that is present when it comes to this diagnosis. But what about the other factors that are out there? We've already talked briefly about Tylenol, which we know that that has now been disproven with a very large study over a long period of time with follow-up, and that has now been published, that Tylenol is not linked to autism. Epidurals are not linked to autism. Vaccines, that's a big one, right? Vaccines being linked to autism. The results of research is clear. Vaccines do not cause autism. However, the vaccine schedule does often coincide with the time that most autism diagnoses are made. And that just has to do with the developmental skills that we should be seeing in a child emerging that are not emerging in a child who has autism are present at the time when children might be getting certain vaccines that are often touted as being linked to autism. But really, the evidence couldn't be more clear that vaccines do not cause autism. And in fact, vaccines help prevent serious, devastating, fatal diseases. Autism is not one of those, thankfully. People who carry the diagnosis of autism can go on to live very full, very rich lives. And again, even live independently, carry jobs, have their own families. And so to then prevent your child from receiving life-saving vaccines because of the theoretical risk is not really ethical and it's not essentially fair to their child's health, but also to public health, especially because there is no link. Now, there are certain environmental risk factors that we do know can increase a child's risk for developing autism, including advanced parental age, prenatal exposure to air pollution or certain pesticides, maternal obesity, diabetes, or other immune system disorders, extreme prematurity or very low birth weight, and birth complications that can lead to oxygen deprivation to baby's brain. And there's also commonly co-occurring diagnoses. Oftentimes we might see ADHD, anxiety, depression, seizures, sleep disorders, GI disturbances. So absolutely, this diagnosis can be a very convoluted one and one that's wrapped up, especially regarding the genetic factors. So we absolutely recommend gene testing for anybody who has been diagnosed with autism because there can be underlying genetic factors at play. For example, for some people, there's a very high risk for autism development. If there's a genetic disorder known as Rett syndrome or a disorder known as Fragile X syndrome at play as well. So absolutely, there are genetic factors, environmental factors, and those social determinants that we can't forget about when trying to pinpoint the risk factors for developing autism. I do want to mention that while we've been able to thankfully disprove the use of acetaminophen being linked to autism, you should always follow your doctor's guidance with regards to taking a medication during, for example, pregnancy or really during any time. But Tylenol use is safe in pregnancy, but always follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. Follow your OB's instructions on when and how to safely dose and take the medication because we obviously don't want to have massive overdoses of these medications either. That's not only not safe for the baby, but not safe for the parent. And I think that's really just like my disclaimer here as a physician that you have to understand as well that everything in moderation, right? I hope this video was helpful. I definitely found this study very helpful as well, just as a parent, but also as a pediatrician reading through this because this is a common misinformation ploy that we see not to take Tylenol because it's toxic, not to take, get an epidural because it's not safe for whatever reason. And essentially, 
these studies have been able to disprove those claims and continue to help pave the way for having clear scientific backed evidence when it comes to making decisions and medical decisions for your health in conjunction with your doctor. Hope this video was helpful. See you guys next week. Bye.